It's Ash from Super Videos back for another video for The Walking Dead. This is going to be a fun one. So we're going to look at a few articles that came out recently and they were based on some interviews that the cast and crew did talking about some things that they wanted to do in the past seasons of The Walking Dead, which just didn't happen. So that's why I called this video What Almost Happened. So things that almost came to be, but for one reason or another, they didn't go that route and they didn't do that for The Walking Dead. One of these is actually related to Negan. Negan was actually, believe it or not, supposed to die at the end of season eight by the hands of Maggie. So that's pretty interesting. Obviously that would have impacted this story significantly and I'm actually glad that they didn't do that because I think that as bad as season seven and eight were for Negan, he was a pretty important part of the story, both in the comics and the show. And I think that it would have really impacted the story in a more or less negative way if they ended up having Negan actually be killed. But that's one thing they wanted to do in the past, which they didn't do. And we'll talk more about that when we go through the article. But the second thing they almost did is related to Beth. Beth was actually supposed to have a pretty brutal and gruesome death at the prison by the hands of Axel, who was obviously one of the prisoners that they found when they found the prison. Axel was supposed to be like a serial killer, but they obviously did end up killing Beth a season or two after that anyway, but you know, it wasn't as dark or as gruesome as what they originally planned. So we'll go through all of those. So the first article we're going to look at comes from Screen Rant, and this is related to the Maggie Negan stuff. The Walking Dead director wanted Maggie to kill Negan in season eight, and the director they're referring to is actually Greg Nicotero. We're going to go through the article. So the Walking Dead producer and episode director Greg Nicotero says he lobbied the showrunner Scott Gimple for Maggie to kill Negan in season eight. As much as people hate on Scott Gimple, this is one case where he really, I think, made the right decision to defend the decision that was made in the comics to not kill Negan. So I'm glad that they did that. Nothing against Greg Nicotero, but I just think that this would have been a pretty bad decision for the story because I think that it would have, like I said, impacted the story negatively. Just try to imagine season 9 and 10 without Negan. It might not have impacted the story that much but it definitely made those two seasons exciting like one of the many reasons why season 9 and 10 were exciting was because of Negan. Negan's scenes were some of the best and most exciting scenes from season 9 and 10. So I just think that it would have been a pretty bad decision to kill Negan at the end of season 8. The Walking Dead director Greg Nicotero wanted Maggie to kill Negan in season 8 played by Lauren Cohan. Maggie Green was introduced on The Walking Dead in season 2 and went on to become a central character. Negan, Jeffrey Dean Morgan of course, was one of the biggest bats of the original Walking Dead comic book and was introduced in memorable fashion on the show in the final episode of season 6. As fans will remember, Negan's first episode ended with a cliffhanger that left everyone in suspense over a whole summer as to the fate of Maggie and the other survivors. When season 7 arrived, it was shockingly revealed that Negan had brutally murdered Glenn, Steven Yeun, and Abraham, Michael Cutlets, with his baseball bat Lucille. A specially painful development for Maggie as she and Glenn had married and she was carrying his child. As the show progressed, it became clear that Maggie wanted revenge on Negan, and for very understandable reasons. However, when Negan was finally defeated by Rick, Andrew Lincoln, at the end of season 8, Maggie was deprived of her chance at vengeance as the villain was sent to jail. So that's obviously exactly the way it went down in the comics. So they ended up keeping it true to the comic source material, which I think, like I said, was the right decision. Indeed, many fans were disappointed when Maggie was not allowed to kill Negan. Actually, most comic fans weren't that surprised or disappointed because they knew it was coming. They knew that Negan was going to be put in a jail cell, just like the comics. So a lot of comic fans already kind of anticipated that anyway. But maybe, yes, that's true for non-comic readers. They would have been very disappointed and surprised in that decision. Many fans were disappointed when Maggie was not allowed to kill Negan and end his villainous arc in season 8. As it turns out, it wasn't only fans who thought Maggie should get to take Negan out. It was also 
people who work on the show. As revealed in an interview on Collider, The Witching Hours show The Walking Dead producer and episode director Nicotero lobbied for Maggie to kill Negan, but to no avail. So this is a direct quote that comes from Greg Nicotero. I said to Scott Gimple, the showrunner, I think Maggie should shoot him. I think Maggie would either kill Negan or shoot Negan or do something because she's right there. I said, it's really a hard moment to shoot knowing that Maggie collapses to her knees because Rick spares Negan's life. I sort of pitched this idea to Gimple. Why doesn't Maggie shoot him? Why doesn't Maggie kill him? And obviously Negan's character had more of a journey. There was a lot more going on. So yeah, that's pretty interesting. And I'm glad, like I said, that they made the decision to keep Negan's arc the same as the comics. As it turned out, Maggie would later have another chance to execute Negan. Obviously, this is from season 9 episode 5, which was Maggie and Rick's final episode, but opted for mercy. Ultimately, Maggie herself would exit the show, as Cohen pursued other opportunities, while Negan remained on the series. Last season, Negan finally got out of jail long enough to take out Whisperer leader Alpha, Samantha Morton, after a hugely uncomfortable love scene between the two villains and deliver her head up to Carol, Melissa McBride. After his murder of Alpha, it seems Negan has completed some kind of a redemption arc in the show. Maggie herself is of course set to return in season 11. She was seemingly slated to make an appearance in the season 10 finale before the show was delayed by the coronavirus, and it will be interesting to see if she buys into Negan now being a good guy or if she still has a desire to get revenge on behalf of Glenn. So one thing I do want to mention, they are wrong here. She's coming back in the finale in season 10 episode 16, which is delayed, but she is back in the finale. So to say she's coming back in season 11 is not fully accurate. So she is coming back in the finale. But yes, it's going to be very interesting to see what we're going to see between Negan and Maggie when she comes back. I've talked about this a lot before, but... It doesn't make sense for the Negan and Maggie beef to restart when Maggie comes back because it's already dealt with. Like Maggie got her closure in that final scene she had with Negan. So for her to come back and approach Negan in a way to want to take revenge or punish him is a little unrealistic and out of character for Maggie. I do understand though for Maggie to become a little uneasy and defensive when she sees Negan is out of jail. So I completely understand that. And I think that there should be some sort of a scene between them that kind of completes their arc in a way, even though it was completed, but there needs to be something. But I don't fully agree or understand why they would have the Negan and Nagy beef restart or their tension to reignite once Maggie and Negan face off again. But I do think, like I said, there should be something. I just don't think that having them butt heads is necessarily the right approach or the realistic approach. But there should be something, like I said. But yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens there when Maggie is back. But I think, if anything, Maggie seeing Negan out of the cell is going to create some sort of a problem between them. But at the same time, when Maggie finds out what Negan did killing Alpha and what Alpha was responsible for, killing Jesus, Tara, Enid and all of them, I think she'll step back a little bit and reassess the situation. But I think it'll be very, very interesting to see what happens there. The fact that Maggie did not take advantage of her previous chances to kill Negan would tend to indicate she won't take him out. But it's hard to show how her character might have changed since her last appearance on The Walking Dead in Season 9. There are no doubt many fans who would still like Maggie to gain vengeance for Glenn's brutal murder, even if it meant Maggie sacrificing her soul. So this was a pretty interesting article. Again, I think it would have been a bad decision to kill Negan at the end of season 8, so I'm glad they didn't do that. But in terms of what we're going to see between Maggie and Negan when Maggie's back, that's going to be very interesting. And I think that that's up for debate at this point. But I do think there should be something between them. But I don't think that Maggie should come back to take vengeance or come back and murder Negan. I don't think that that's the right 
approach or that's the right way for the story to go. So the second article we're going to look at comes from comicbook.com and this is related to Beth and how she was supposed to have a brutal and gruesome death at the hands of a serial killer named Axel who they found at the prison. Like I said, Axel was still someone that they found at the prison, but he wasn't a murderer. He wasn't a serial killer when they found him. He was just a regular guy who was in jail for one reason or another. But we're going to go through this article here as well. So the Walking Dead star reveals shocking serial killer murder that almost happened. The Walking Dead originally planned on having Axel, Lou Temple, one of the five inmates discovered still inside the Georgia prison, taken over by the group of zombie apocalypse survivors led by Rick Grimes, Andrew Lincoln, will be revealed as a serial killer who would slaughter a major character. Jailed for robbing a store with a water pistol, the affable Axel outlived the prison crew. Big Tiny, Thudos, Crane, Thomas, Nick Gomez, Andrew, Marcus Moore, and Oscar, Vincent Ward and took a liking to abuse survivor Carol, Melissa McBride, before he was shot and killed by the governor. That actually reminds me, for those of you that don't remember how Axel died, it was the governor that shot Axel. He was actually in mid-conversation with Carol, and he was shot in the head and died. And I thought that was a pretty interesting and shocking way to kill a character. Even though it was a background character, or he was a background character, I still think that he was one of the most shocking deaths that we've seen in terms of being out of the blue and out of nowhere. Going back to the article and took a liking to abuse survivor Carol Melissa McBride before he was shot and killed by the governor David Morrissey during a surprise attack on the prison in season 3 episode called Home. And this is a direct quote that comes from Lou Temple who played Axel. He says, I showed up with the idea that I was going to be a serial killer and then the day of got a note to switch that temple told skybound talk dead to me podcast no no we've got to lighten things up a bit we've been pretty dark so the reason why they ended up changing this is because they thought they were too dark which is pretty interesting i mean it's a show about zombies it's a show about survivors killing each other to survive how much more dark can you get? You know what I mean? So it's interesting that they thought that was more dark than what they've already been doing. So that's pretty interesting. Asked to play Axel with some levity and a colloquial charm, Temple recalls requests from the writers to leave enough wiggle room for the creative team to reveal the mustache man as a murderer. And I think he did a good job on that because me watching, when I was watching that season, I wasn't sure what to expect from him. He was 50-50. Like he could be a murderer, he could be a good guy and I think that he did a good job. Each episode the writers would come up to me and say look we've got this other thing going down the road. The other thing is going to happen where you're not what you've been revealing Temple said and I'm like okay but don't give too much of that away at all. I said actually I'm not going to give any of that away because you've told me a lot of things and so far what I'm doing is the only thing that's true. So I think what he's trying to say there is that he wanted to make it be realistic and genuine and even if he was a murderer or a serial killer it's not like he's gonna make it pretty obvious that he's a serial killer you know what I mean so he wanted to make it be in the middle if audiences still have any lingering reservations about Axel Temple said it's because abandoned scripts had him abduct and then butcher Beth Green, Emily Kenny. So that's pretty interesting. That would have been a pretty dark and gruesome death or story in my opinion. Not as dark as some of the other things that they've done, but definitely it's up there. And I think the way Beth actually died was a lot less gruesome and brutal than what they had planned for her. So that's pretty interesting. There were some episodes that were written where I do take Beth into the woods and then slaughter her. And so we didn't get to any of those, Temple said. That's why I kept buttoned up. He was gonna come undone and be totally Henry Rollins tattooed. And I just thought that was pretty interesting that they brought that up. Henry Rollins. Of course, Negan in the comics was based off of Henry Rollins in terms of what he looked like. So I thought that was pretty interesting that he brings this up. But anyway, the whole thing about being a drug addict was all a facade. The thing about the squirt gun and pistol is all bullshit. So that's the way it was supposed to go or they had it planned but obviously they didn't go that route. Temple also revealed pages that had Axel brutally 
beat Carol, who was moving away from her traumatic past as a battered housewife following the death of abusive husband Ed, Adam Minarovich, in the show's first season. I mean, just these really dark things that the writers were talking about, Temple said, and then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, we painted ourselves in the corner. The governor's showing up and he's gonna draw blood, so he'll be impotent. He's gonna draw first blood and it's looking like you're gonna get the short straw. In creator Robert Kirkman's comic book, where Axel was a trusted member of Rick's group, the survivors en encountered a short-lived serial killer as early as issue number 13. There, it was quiet convict Thomas Richards, who was revealed as a psychopathic killer when he attacked and decapitated Susie and Rachel Green, Maggie's younger twin sisters, who did not appear in the television series. So that's pretty interesting. And I think down the road, that's definitely something that they could do. Like coming up in the next few seasons, when we do get to bigger stories like the Commonwealth story, it would make sense to have one of the characters be a serial killer. And I think that it would make for an interesting, unique and entertaining story arc to have something like that go down. But that's pretty much everything I wanted to go through in this video. This was a little bit of a longer video, but it was just one of those fun and random ones that I wanted to do. But that's pretty much everything that I wanted to talk about. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. That's it for this video. See you next time for another super video.